Well, I think that's the... No, I, I think that Helen is um, wrong to say that it's very simple. I mean, very few things are very simple. Uh, and if ever there was something that wasn't very simple, it's this. It's very complicated. Um, and I think that it is perfectly plausible, and there is lots of evidence that would support what she says about the differences between men and women. That is that women do seek high-status men. They tend to seek older men, etc., etc. And, um, you know, that is true. And in order to attract those women, men have to have high status. You know, and that, it remains a strong tendency in our society. Whether it's caused by what happened in the primordial swamp is much more debatable uh, and there's a very plausible alternative explanation for it which no doubt Dinah could explain more clearly than I that uh, you know but there's there are strong current sociological changes that haven't occurred despite 30 years of feminism and I mean I think the other thing that's very important there to remember is that is, is that men uh, because they expect to be the breadwinner, because their status derives from that, because they, and that's the way they're going to pull, basically, that is true. Um, because, of the, the, you know, they're very much trapped in wanting to have a high status job, wanting to have a good wedge. On, on the other hand, you know, I think the thing that is difficult and has to be addressed by the sociological argument is why is it that so many women give up work? I mean, to some extent, I can agree with Dinah that, um, you know, there are still glass ceilings and there are still difficulties for women to get out of the part-time work into the serious full-time jobs and the power and the wealth and the status. But just, you know, the fact is that, you know, 11% you know, of under one-year-olds have a mother who works full-time. In other words, 89% of mothers don't work full-time with an under one-year-old. And the total number of women who are working with under one-year-olds or under so three-year-olds, so they, they leave the workforce so to look so, after their so children. In other words, there's quite a lot of women voluntarily leaving the workforce. Yes, and at that, no point, that. And at that point, it's highly, it's, high, it's, it's going to make sense for them to have men who are providing for them in jobs which can, which can make that provision, which, as we've said, increasingly um, isn't likely to happen. Well, I mean, let's look at one way, Helena, in which we, uh, men could displace this. I mean, it's often said, well, why couldn't men get more into the, uh, into the family? And if they can't work quite so much and can't quite derive quite so much status from work, maybe they could begin to share out a bit more what's happening at home. There is a problem with that in that um, or maternal care and paternal care are asymmetrical in our species. You mean they're different? Um, they're different. They're different in quality and in quantity. Um, obviously, in our species, we're a mammal. Uh, we have to have very, very strong maternal love and maternal care, and natural selection has been Because suckling and stuff. Of course. Right, if, okay. if a mother got up and left the baby as soon as it were born, in a, ma in a mammalian species, there would be no babies in the next generation. And so, and we're no different. And the mechanism that natural selection has laid down in us to ensure that that happens is maternal love, which is deep and enduring and strong. Now, fathers can get up and walk away. But it awful turns women out. Don't have maternal love, they? Um, on average, we are evolved as a species to experience maternal love. There are often good environmental reasons why this doesn't occur. Yes. And remember, we're not living in a natural environment so in it's which there's. So it's actually unrealistic to offer men that much of a great height and role well, in families no, that it's quickly. Very, it's, very important, it's very important to recognise that unusually among mammals, unusually among primates, in our species we are also evolved for quite a high degree of monogamy. And that means that men are evolved to look after and to have some commitment to the children in which they've made this monogamous relationship. Right. So there is also paternal love, but it isn't the same. Well, there was an awful lot of not. nodding around this table when we well, mentioned men being just, monogamous, but Deeran... It's, it's just interesting what Ellen says just then when she talks about um, men being developed to, to have this sort of monogamous being monogamous relationships Fairly and have monogamous, the paternal love, because that seems to me to slightly contradict what you were saying about women wanting um, men who have high status. I think that women, when they're looking for a partner, are looking for that partner to bring a lot of things to the table. Of course, peop um, people want a partner who's ambitious, you know, who's, who wants to get a good job. To do, but they don't necessarily need that man to have a high status job. They're looking for that man to love, to love any children they might have, to take part in various other... But Dylan, you heard Terry McDermott things. in the film say, I mean, she didn't directly contradict you, but what she did say is, um, all the studies uh, she felt, and what matters is that she, in a way is that she felt it, seemed to show that you didn't have to have a father in the home. It wasn't of any sort of practical benefit, save for the money he brought to it. I don't think, I don't think that's, that's true at all. And I think that young boys especially need a father, a father figure around them. And we can already see that 
a number of young boys are harmed by the lack of a father. When, when a father does come into a situation, father does come into a situation in a single parent family where there's the young male child, the male child will always respond, you know, to, to that father. It could be an uncle, it could be any sort of father figure. They, they need the father. Diana, 71%, I mean, as I was saying, 71% of divorces are instigated by women who obviously don't think that uh, the, the family needs a father that badly. Well, it's a slightly meaningless statistic because women may be instigating the divorce, but they didn't necessarily instigate the separation that led to the divorce. Sure. But leaving aside that, I, I'm saddened to hear paternal love being downgraded to second best. Of course, it's true that women breastfeed, but um, apart from that, um, it just seems to me on an anecdotal basis that there is overwhelming evidence for the intense and deep love that men feel for their children. And it's not about going out to work and providing for them. It's about being their dad on a daily, intimate, loving basis. It's just about being their mum. Uh, you know, exactly. there are many, it's many exactly men right. who yeah. are much more Absolutely maternal right. than the women. I wasn't celebrating it to second yeah. best. Absolutely I certainly right. wasn't. I was That's saying precisely it. precisely what you said, I was, that it was second that best. I wasn't. I did not use the word second best. No, but that was I your it, intention. Okay. It was not my intention. Helen, uh, uh, clarify then. I said that they are different. Um, maternal love and paternal love are not the same. And paternal love doesn't have all the same qualities as maternal love, such that, such that... It's a meaningless generalisation. Such that you can't... You don't it's have very any meaningful, you don't, that's, such that's that... That's not a scientific statement, that I'm you afraid. Can't as a, as well, hold a on, hold on, can I, can I cut through this? Can I, can I, Helena, hold, 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 hold a second. Sure, can I just cut, cut through this for a, a moment? Woman. Yes, you can. One, one in five, yeah. one in five families now don't have a father. That's that, that's the contingent fact. Whatever the sort of deep biology of it, I mean, they don't have it. And if paternal love is as important as you keep, uh, uh, as you say, Diana, why have we got so many families that don't have dads? Oh, well, because a lot of marriages break up, and it's terrible. And, and there's very recently been a study that shows that children are twice as likely to get into trouble, uh, are likely to have a lot more problems at school, um, to achieve less well educationally and professionally when they come from a broken home. And I think that's desperately sad. Um, and I would strongly endorse the suggestion in the film that we do need to have more family-friendly policies. That means proper parental leave, leave for men and women. We need to encourage employers to have more flexible working practices for men and women. It's been a sad thing today to see both Oliver and myself equating part-time work with being low status, poorly paid. And I think Oliver made a, a, a specific contrast between part-time work and, and serious work, which means full-time. Now, that's, that's a terrible indictment of our, of our society, that we can't take people seriously in the workplace unless they're doing a 50-hour week. We don't need people to do 50-hour weeks. Let's do 35-hour weeks and spend more well, time with our kids. But this is, but this is, but this is a problem hours, for something meaningless. that you were saying, uh, uh, Oliver. If part-time work and work with the family is seen as low status, then it is likely that men are going to be less willing to try, to try for it. Well, that's why we have to have the change. I mean, we have to, you know, we have to wait 50 years to see how this gigantic social experiment that's turns true. out. But in, for the time being, we can look at places like Denmark, where, it, you know, I'm afraid Helena would have a real problem if she went to Denmark, because she'd find, you know, when I went there not so long ago, all, the streets are full of boys Board. and men pushing children with buggies. Um, you know, there are a great many men who can quite happily, you know, who I, I know personally, anecdotally, I mean, you can look at it scientifically, in Denmark it's quite clear that men are very involved in childcare in, in a maternal way. Um, you know, there's no difference between maternal love given by a man Oliver, and a yeah. woman. Uh, but, uh, but that strikes me as being sort of all in the future. I mean, if you were to actually look for the it evidence of now. it now, you it say, well, you say it happens, you it happens say it happens, in, it happens, it happens in mile end now. It, ha yeah. it happens anecdotally now. It doesn't happen statistically now. And we all know what the well, difference is. We know people who do it, but we don't know very well. But that's very simple, because socialisation for age 0 to 5 is a very, very powerful experience. And genes may come into it. I don't dispute that. It's possible. We'll see in 50 years' time. In the meantime, we do know that little boys and little girls identify very strongly with their parents, mm. which partly explains, I think, why so many 25-year-old, 28-year-old, 29-year-old women who are thrusting forward and doing just as well as men in the workplace drop out and have children because they suddenly identify with, their, with the mother who they'd forgotten about, you know, when they were naught to five. And, um, you know, it's not that they have some less desire for status or anything like that, as far as I can see. It may be, but I don't think it is. I think it's simply that they have a very strong identification with the maternal role. Well, def I mean, definitely. I think everything comes back to the home. Everything can be remedied in the home. Everything can be changed in the home. So if a child is growing up 
in a particular home environment where they see the father if like taking a more maternal role then that child will learn to understand yeah. that, well, that, well, that well, this is may. allowed we'll see they Durant, we'll that, raises, that raises a really very interesting question uh, which is this question which is this point that i talked about at the end of the film which is the attack that some people would see on masculinity that along with the sort of you know the, the masculine problem areas of violence and aggression and so on uh, we are now witnessing a full-scale assault on the virtues of masculinity like some people would say uh, intellectualism or coolness or, or things like this uh, uh, sang froid um, not spilling it all and so on 